Hey, welcome to our bathroom. Why are we in the bathroom today? I'll tell you, it's the thing that we hate most about this boat. If you followed our channel for any length of time, you know that we've done just a lot to this boat. We've changed everything that we don't like about it. You can watch all these videos that we've done. But there are some things that we just can't change, and that's, how, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So number one on our list of things that we don't like about this boat and we can't change it. I shouldn't say that. I should say we don't want to change it because it'd be way too much work. If we want to do something like sail life and completely gut the boat, we could change anything we wanted to change because Rich is really talented and he has a lot of skills to do that kind of stuff. But this is one of those things that we're not going to change. And we, we just We don't like it. And it's this, it's the bathroom. So we have, this boat has a wet head and it's of the model era that had wet heads. If we had bought a newer Tayana, just like this, it would have a separate shower, which we would really love, but we don't have that. So anyway, we have the, a really nice shower, which we changed. And we have nice countertops, which we changed. We have a really nice toilet. Uh, we have a, a shower curtain track and we have a shower curtain but we don't like it and we hate it and i need to come up with a solution for that anyway so that's probably going to be on a, a later video but um, right now we just really don't even use it we only use it if we really have to uh, other than that we're showering up at the marina so so number two on our list is the location of our refrigerator so in later models of this boat they had them flip-flopped sink was over here refrigerator was over here and in the early models, it was the way we have it. We completely gutted the fridge and rebuilt it, and it's nice. We really like it. It works great. There's actually a lot of space in here, but it would be better if it was over here. There's more space. Um, you could actually be a little bit deeper, and we just couldn't do it. It was um, the through hole is over here for the sink. There isn't one over here. It's just one of those things that we kind of have to live with. So this is our number two on the list, location of our fridge. Number three on our list is the outside teak and there's just a lot of it so and you know it takes a long time to maintain we think it looks really nice but if we had to do it all over again we would not buy a boat with so much teak and once again some of the later models didn't have it all across the side here they just had a little bit at that end and a little bit at the front ours just happens to have it all the way around and we've actually taken some of the teak off we, we had, there was a strip on the bottom here that we eliminated. The Dorade guards are teak. We just epoxied those and painted them. Um, but everything else we're going to keep. So number four on our list is the location of our diesel tank. So we have a about 100 gallons of diesel and it's located under our V-berth. Okay. Later models of this boat had the diesel tanks in the middle, in the bilge area, um, which is just a lot better for balance of the boat. Once our, when our tank is full, it's a lot of weight up front, plus the chain and everything else we had going on up there. So if we could change that, we would have, but that would mean cutting out the diesel tank or cutting the top off the boat to get it out. So neither one of those are something we're ever gonna do. Okay, so the last thing on our list of things that we don't really like about this boat is the location of our holding tank. So you can't even see it. It's down here. It's underneath the engine. It's glassed into the hull. There's no way we can service it. So the hose that connects it to the toilet is 18 feet long. It connect. It goes all the way across the boat. Also, it's very small. I think it's like maybe, maybe 15 gallons. Maybe, we don't even know. There was maybe one time where we actually could have changed something about the holding tank. And that's when we had the Perkins out of the boat and we hadn't installed this thing yet. Cause then we could actually see the holding tank. But other than that, it's kind of something we're just stuck with. We did five things that we don't like about our boat. So we thought we would do five things that we really do like about our boat. So one of those things is our windlass. So we installed uh, an electric windlass a few years ago. This is a low frowns. It's a Tigris model. That's the size that fits our boat. And it really is kind of a game changer with anchoring. So we had a, a manual Simpson Lawrence 555 and it was great, you know, it worked great. And we actually refurbished the whole thing and it was in like like new condition. 
but I read an article from Carolyn Sherlock of the Boat Galley and she made a really good case about why an electric windlass is really important for safety. And it's one of those things where if you have an, a manual windlass and you anchor and it, maybe it's not perfect, you're way less likely to lift the anchor and redo it because it's, it's a pain. It's hard. It's you know, almost backbreaking work, even if it's a manual windlass. I mean, it's a lot of wrenching to get that thing up. So if you have an electric windlass, it's so easy. You're just like, you know what, this, this anchorage isn't great or the anchor isn't set perfectly. Let's just redo it. And it's really easy. So that was kind of my justification for spending almost $3,000 to get an electric windlass. Second thing on our list of things that we really like that we've done to the boat is the Dodger. So we've wanted a Dodger since we bought the boat. We got it done by uh, Compass Canvas in Richmond, and they're really great to work with. The design style for our boat, we didn't want something that was super tall and kind of like a clunk add-on thing. It, so we've seen some boats that have a, a boom gallows like we do, and the inclination is always just to put the windows straight up to the boom gallows and then over and they can look a little bit they look they look like a big wall it's just it's just yeah. it's, really, it's just awkward looking i think compass campus was able to make the the angles and the lines of the dodger fit like the elegant lines of our boat it's also i think the second most expensive thing we bought we paid about eighty five hundred dollars for this Dodger. We really, we just really love it. We love the color, we love the design, we love, it's just how it makes the boat look and also the shade in the summer and then for the rain in the winter. It's been really nice. You can see from our uh, video on the way to get the Dodger that we really needed it. It was super splashy. Rich got really wet at the helm because I went inside when <laughs> it got really splashy. And then on the way to the Napa boatyard a couple months ago, it came in really handy because in the same exact spot. It's right through Pittsburgh. It's super splashy. So it, it really came in handy then too. And on the way back, we got rain and what have you. So it's been really nice. It, it provides some privacy at the dock here. So that's always nice. You know, when you live aboard full time and you work, you know, you want to sit outside, especially on the weekends, you got people just constantly coming and going. And sometimes you just don't, want to be super social and it's nice you just put the cover up and they don't even know you're here <laughs> so anyway our dodger is our second thing that we really like about our boat number three on the list of things that we've done that we really like on the boat is this new beta engine it's also the most expensive thing we've done this thing cost about 20 grand when all was said and done and we did everything ourselves we did the in complete installation so it would have been obviously a little bit more if we had had somebody do it what we had originally was a perkins 4108 uh, the engine hour didn't work when we got it so we really didn't know how many hours were on it it had some issues you know it, it, it constantly just need to be maintained and it leaked like crazy the bilge was black this one obviously doesn't leak so and and the reputation of the Perkins is that they always leak so it's not like something we could we were ever gonna fix even replacing the bottom seal it probably still would have leaked so now I've got this nice shiny new engine and we're really happy with it all right number four on our list is our anchor so we got the Rockna Vulcan anchor we got the 25 kg 55 pounds it's actually a little bit oversized for our boat but we absolutely love it. There's all kinds of engineering that went into this thing and it just, it sets perfectly almost every time. So we had a hard time finding an anchor that would sit right on our bowsprit. And the original Rockna has a big roll bar that's helpful for setting the anchor and it just doesn't fit on our on our boat with the bowsprit. They came out with this one, which is the Vulcan, and it just sits perfectly. Well, it sits pretty good, I should say. I think there was one time that it didn't set and it was because we were on like a big pile of weeds uh, and it just was kind of skimming across the top. But other than that, this thing just works every time. So we really do love it. It just feels, it's just a peace of mind when you're at anchor. All right, the last thing on our list of things that we really like about this boat is our induction cooktop and our little air fryer oven. So we had a propane force 10. Actually, it was, it was new. We installed it. Um, it was, it was really fluky. It just, um, it wouldn't hold a consistent temperature. So we tore all the propane out of the boat and put this induction cooktop in. So it's just the mini duo is what it's called. It's a two burner. It has a sorry, one to 10, uh, range, or you can actually set a temperature like 150 to 450. If you want, you can do a timer. I mean, I've never actually used all that stuff, but this works really well and it's really fast and super efficient. So we really love the induction cooktop. And then 
the little air fryer oven we have works great. It actually holds a really good temperature. The only gripe I have about this is it's a little bit on the small side. I wish we'd had a bigger one when we bought this. We just didn't have a lot of options. There was like two on the market or something. So now you go and there's like, I don't know, 15 different ones you can get, all different sizes and models, whatever. Anyway, and then Rich built this gimbling box for it and it works really great and it's got some drawers for all the utensils and stuff and then we also he also found these little rails to put pot holders on and they're adjustable so you can slide them up and down and lock them down this is our one of our favorite things about this boat all right so there you have the five things that we really like about our boat and five things that we really don't like about our boat and everything that we could change we've changed so the things that we don't like, we're just kind of stuck with at this point, but that's okay. Every boat's a compromise and we're okay with that. So if you have a comment, leave it below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell and whatever else you're supposed to do on these videos in YouTube. What we didn't say is uh, after living on this boat for 10 years, we've realized it's just too small. This is a two person boat with max. The cat takes up too much space. Wow. She lays in the middle of the floor, you know, it's tripping over. And her cat box and her food and...